In this video, I will talk about a variable that you should use in absolutely every Google Tag Manager container that contains Google Analytics tags. I mean, Universal Analytics tags. And I'm talking about the Google Analytics settings variable. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. If you want to implement Google Analytics tags in your Google Tag Manager container, you'll quickly learn that you will have more than one tag. For example, one Google Analytics tag for page views, one tag for purchase tracking, one tag for outbound link clicks, and so on. You can configure them individually, one by one, or you can use Google Analytics settings variable that contains the most common configuration. This means that all the tags that use this variable will inherit settings from that variable, for example, tracking ID, cookie settings, custom dimensions, and so on. If this sounds confusing, don't worry. And let's take a look at the example. Here I am in my Google Tag Manager demo container, and in that container I have two Google Analytics tags. The first one is the most essential one and the most basic one, which is the page view tag. This tag fires on all pages, and also I have configured that I want this page view to be sent to this Google Analytics property. Also, I want to track outbound link clicks, so when someone clicks a link that redirects them to some external resource. I also want to track that as an event. That's why I have created another tag of which type is event, event category, event action. And also I am sending that information to the same Google Analytics property. So if I wanted to track something else, for example, also purchases, I would need to create one more tag. If I wanted to, let's say, track scrolling, although I don't believe that this is very useful, but still, or let's say you want to track video interactions. I mean, when someone interacts with an embedded YouTube video player on your site, you should also create a separate tag for that. So the more things you want to track with Google Analytics, the more tags you will need. And it is perfectly fine if you set your tracking IDs or maybe some other settings on the level of each tag. I mean, this will work fine and the data will be sent properly to Google Analytics. However, the management and the maintenance of these tags will become more difficult as your container grows and as your number of Google Analytics tags grows. Here, let me show you something. So once again, let's imagine that I have a container with three tags. One is page view, the other one is for add to cart, and the other one is for PDF downloads. And all of them send data to the same Google Analytics property. This is the ID and it is the same on all three tags. Now the problem will be bigger if you have multiple Google Analytics tags and all of them have some settings configured on the level of the tag. So for example, in this case, we have tracking IDs configured on level of each individual tag. So now imagine a situation where you or your client decides to move from one Google Analytics property to another one, because maybe, I don't know, the data was totally crap and I don't know, for some reason. So in this case, if you have configured Google Analytics property ID on each tag, this means that you will need to go one by one and update all those tags and change the tracking ID. I mean, once again, this might work. I mean, your tags will still be firing properly, but this increases the possibility of human error because maybe some tags will still be using the old ID. And also it is just a waste of time. What you could do instead is that you could use a variable that contains the most common settings of your tags and all the tags would be using the same variable. So instead of having something like this where settings are individual for each tag, you could have something like this. One variable that contains the most common settings, for example, tracking ID, cookie settings, maybe some custom dimensions, maybe some additional configuration like anonymized IP or something else. So what would happen is that you could have one variable that would be used by all the tags and all these tags would just inherit those particular settings. And obviously the type of that variable that I'm going to talk about is GA settings variable. So instead of having settings on the individual tag, what we could do is that we could actually create one G settings variable and then use that in all the tags, all the Google Analytics tags that we want. So let's copy this tracking ID, then go to G settings variable field and click new variable. And here you will be asked to first of all, enter the tracking ID. So this is very important. Cookie settings are 
set by default to auto. And in most cases, this is exactly what you need. And of course, if you want to have some additional parameters, like let's say custom dimensions or maybe some additional fields to set, you can do that right here. So click more settings. And let's say that we want to uh, anonymize the IP address of all the requests that are sent to Google Analytics. So we can do that by going to fields to set, field name and enter anonymize IP and set this to true. This means that all the GA tags that will be using this variable will have anonymized IP. We can also have some additional settings like let's say enabled advertising features, maybe some GDPR settings and so on. But right now, just for sake of demonstration, let's keep it as it is. And then let's name the variable. I usually name it like this. Save the variable and it will be automatically added to the tag. Save the tag. In fact, we can also go back to the tag. And since we have configured the tracking ID in that variable, we don't need this setting right here. So you can uncheck the enabling uh, overriding settings. Then let's do the same thing with the page view tag. And if you have, let's say, five or 10 or 20 tags of Google Analytics, you should do the same thing to all of those tags. All right, so let's check whether our tags are still working properly. So to do that, we need to enable the preview and debug mode. And once the orange banner appears, go to the website, refresh the page, and you will see that first of all, my page view tag has fired. I can click on the container loaded, then click on the tag, and I can switch from names to values, and I will see what kind of information was stored in the G settings variable at that moment, and what was used by the tag. So for example, right here, I see anonymized IP, cookie domain, I see the tracking ID, and so on. But what if for some tags you actually need to have some unique settings that are not the same as they are in the G settings variable? Well, that is perfectly fine. And to do that, you can use the, the previously mentioned uh, overriding settings uh, option. So you can go to Google Tag Manager. And let's say that with the page view tag, we also want to send a certain custom dimension, but we don't want to send that dimension with the outbound link click tag. So we can do it like this. You go to tag, then you click enable overriding settings, and then you need to configure what kind of settings do you want to override. If you don't want to override, let's say the tracking ID, keep this field empty because as it says right here, this value will be inherited from the settings variable because we have tracking ID configured right there. But if we want to add something additional like custom dimension, we need to go to more settings then custom dimension. And then let's say that I have already created a custom dimension with the index one and some variable contains a value that I want to use as a custom dimension. For example, let's say that I want to track the previous page as a custom dimension. So I click this button and then choose the refer as custom dimension number one. But if you have no idea what I'm doing right now, you should do your own research about custom dimensions and how to configure them because that is a totally different topic. Right now, I just want to show you an example of overriding settings and sending a custom dimension or let's see some other parameter just with the page view tag, while all the other tags do not get this custom dimension. So to sum up, what happens here is that this tag will be using all the settings from the G settings variable, except that on top of that, this tag will also be sending a custom dimension number one, and the value of that dimension will be a refer. But what if we want to override a certain parameter on the tag level, while that parameter is also configured in the GA settings variable? Well, that is totally possible as well with the enable overriding settings checkbox. So let's say that for some reason, we want to disable anonymized IP setting for this particular tag. If you remember in the G settings variable, I have configured anonymized IP parameter to be set to true. But let's say that on this particular tag, I want that very same parameter to be set to false. So this means that we are tracking the full IP address of the visitor. So in that case, this configuration will override what is configured in the G settings variable because overriding will always have a higher priority compared to the GA settings variable, which is quite logical. So if you configure something on the G settings variable, 
those tags will take those values. But if something is overridden by the tag itself, then that gets the higher priority and that is used by the tag. But once again, I want to emphasize that if you configure something on the G settings variable level, and then you don't configure that on a tag level, what will happen is that Google Tag Manager will be using the G settings variable configuration. I am repeating that because I noticed some confusion among Google Tag Manager beginners where people enable overriding settings and then still enter tracking ID right here. You don't need to do that because tracking ID is already entered in the G settings variable. So if you don't want to change something specifically related to that tracking ID, you can leave this field empty. Because if you use the G settings variable, but still enter tracking ID right here, which is the same, then I mean, what's the point of that? And when you do all the configurations, don't forget to test everything thoroughly once again. And after you're ready, then click submit and publish your Google Tag Manager container uh, latest version to your website. All right, now you're familiar with the Google Analytics settings variable in Google Tag Manager. It is a great time saver when it comes to managing universal analytics tags. Imagine a situation where you have 100 Google Analytics tags and you need to change two parameters, tracking ID and some custom dimension. With Google Analytics settings variable, you could do that in 30 seconds. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below this video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about GTM and Google Analytics, consider subscribing. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.